Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I am going to talk about the way to build Shinguchi Sakura, who is the female protagonist and heroine of the first four games of the Sakura Wars video game series. Now, of course, only I think the fifth game of that series was released internationally, so... Really, most people would be familiar with her more through, I guess, the anime than from the game series. In any case, let's begin talking about the way to build Sakura. And first things first, Sakura is a crossover character, which means she doesn't need any other characters to unlock her bonds. As long as you commit two runestones into her so that she has access to both of her tier 3 classes, she will get access to her 4th and 5th bond. Now, because at this stage in the game, she's released, you know, let's say 8 months into the game, meaning if you're going to use Sakura, you're absolutely going to have to commit runestones into her. So I'm going to build this video based on the fact that you already have 2 runestones in Sakura, because you will never be using her with just a single class mastery. It's, it just doesn't make sense. Alright. So, with that said, let's talk about her talent, Reiken Erataka. It has two effects. After killing an enemy, all stats except for hit points increases by a certain percentage. This is stackable up to four times, and this effect cannot be dispelled. In addition to that, when entering battle, if your skill is greater than your enemies, you will attack first. So, two amazing effects. Uh, the fact that as she kills enemies, she gets stronger is amazing. And the percentage increases based on her star level. At 3 stars, it is 5%. At 4 stars, it's a 6% increase. At 5 stars, it becomes an 8% stat increase. And then at, 10, and then at 6 stars, it becomes 10% stat increase. So with 4 stacks, right, you're looking at... Well, at 6 stars, she's getting 40% increase on all stats, right? So it's just an amazing effect. You know, at 5 stars, you're looking at 32% and so on. Uh, 6 stars is 30, you know. Sorry, 6 stars is 24, and then, then 3 stars right now is a 20% stat increase. You know, generally speaking, you'll be looking at it from a uh, 5 stars or 6 stars perspective. So, yeah, I mean, this the first part of this skill is what makes Shinguchi Sakura usable in both PvP and PvE content because the more she kills, the stronger she gets, right? That makes her very powerful and able to kill all sorts of enemies. And the second part of the skill, the fact that as long as her skill is higher than the enemies, she will attack first, really allows her to avoid taking damage in general, right? Since if she can attack and one-shot the enemy, they never get to retaliate against her. So. Overall, Sakura is just an amazingly powerful character. Now, with that said, let's talk about her classes, right? And it's interesting, she has an infantry class and a cavalry class. The unique thing about her cavalry class is, first of all, they only have 4 mobility rather than the usual 5. Her infantry class is the standard 3 mobility. There's also a note here about her class, where it says can move four blocks and performs better in wilderness than, I guess, you know, in open terrain, presumably. Not sure if that actually means she gets some additional stats in terrain. Uh, truly not sure there. But it's just an interesting note that I noticed in her class description. Because as you know, for certain characters, their class description highlights additional effects of characters. For example, Joshua in the demon class can equip bows, daggers, and light armor, right? Valkyrie class, uh, like Chris, can do the same. So I don't know if this is an extra effect for the cavalry class or not, but just wanted to mention it. And now, let's talk about her best classes. So, the thing about Sakura is she is very, very equipment dependent. Uh, Arguably, her best class is her infantry class, because the infantry class has ridiculously high skill. 247 skill, in fact. Uh, 
that combined with her talent will allow her to basically always attack first. However, her cavalry class, Sakura Ko uh, Kobu, at level 60 and fully upgraded, she actually has around 142 skill. And 142 skill is actually higher than just about everybody except for archers, assassins, and of course, flyers, right? Flyers have around 154, for example. Uh, but everyone else, mages, infantry class characters, lancers, they all have low skill, okay? So even in her cavalry class, she can still attack first against most enemies. So just an interesting note about the Sakura uh, Kobo, Kobu skill, uh, class. So, because of lack of mobility in the infantry class though, being three, she really needs apex boots to be used in infantry effectively. If you have apex boots to give her, by all means, make her an evil slayer, because at, with four mobility, that's enough for her to move around to attack enemies. If you don't have apex boots on her, you'll have to seriously consider using Sakura in her cavalry class, just simply for the four mobility. It is not ideal, of course, but at least you get a much more usable Sakura with four mobility that way. The reason this form mobility is so important is because I've actually had matches in PvP where enemy mages and even enemy leons were able to completely evade the attacks of my Elwyn, right? Because keep in mind, my Elwyn currently only has full moon enchant, so she does he doesn't have breeze. And you know, Leon was able to let's say attack a target, making my tank guard, and then retreat back three tiles. And Elwyn never had a chance to actually attack the enemy. Uh, as a result. Same thing with when I faced off against characters with move again, like enemy Lunas, right? Bone Knight Lunas especially. She she would attack, retreat, and Elwyn would never be able to get close. Um, and even Archers and Assassins, like for example Zerida, if she has a Sly Stride, right, after she kills someone she can retreat three tiles, and then Elwyn would not be able to get into range. So that is why a three movement Sakura, in my opinion, is basically unusable. You know, a four movement Sakura at least has the opportunity to get in close. You know, she may be lacking a bit of movement, but she has the chance to get in to range. So that's just something to keep in mind. So generally speaking, I would say if you have Apex Boots, use Evil Slayer. If you don't have Apex Boots, use the Cavalry class and expect to do less damage in general. All right, so with that said, let's talk about her skills and the, her, the skill combos to use her. Sakura is pretty interesting. She actually has two line attacks and then two single target strike skills, okay? Uh, she gets, for single target strikes, she has Roar, right, to dispel buffs, decrease enemy attack, and do 1.3 times damage. She also has Smash, which will Decrease enemies defense by 20%, knock them back 2 tiles, and disable guard effects while doing 1.4 times damage. Both skills are incredibly useful. Okay. And then other than those two skills, she her two line attacks are Hyaka Rorin, which is a 4 range line attack skill. 4 range is pretty short, but this skill is pretty much an ultimate skill, right? Uh, it deals it causes enemy skill to decrease by 30%, right? Damage taken to increase by 30%, and inflicts heal reversal on the enemy, where all healing effects are turned into damage, equal to 30% of the healing amount, and it lasts two turns. Multiple debuffs, so it's a great skill, even though the range is a bit limited. Other than that, she also has Oka Hoshin, which is a five range line attack with a three turn cooldown. Okay. Uh, this one, can apply additional fixed damage to the enemy, uh, which is two times the attacker's attack value. And this will be after the enemy moves though. So you can think of it as being like a line attack that can apply debuffs on the enemy that can do damage to them, such as, I don't know, maybe comparable to let's say Lifini's matching explosion, doing some damage. Although it does significantly less damage than magic explosion. So yeah, two line attacks, and two single target strike skills. 
In terms of the one point skill, she has a pretty wide variety of choices for one point. Uh, there is this Endure to increase her defense by 7%. I don't like it. There's Sunshade, which has a chance to a 30% chance for you to restore hit points, equals to 30% of your damage dealt this battle. Very luck based skill for one point. I don't like that either. There's Bloodbath, where when unit hit points is lower than the enemy and entering combat, your attack and defense increase by 10%. That's still not that great in my opinion, but the best one to me is her starting passive, Deathmatch. When entering battle, units attack and skill increase by 12%. Defense and magic defense decrease by 7%. This one is her best one because of her talent, right? Increasing her skill by 12% gives her a higher chance of attacking first. And increasing the attack gives her a higher chance of one-shotting the enemy uh, so that they never get to retaliate against her at all. So that's why I think Deathmatch is her, one, her best one-point skill. And in terms of the two-point skills, you mix and match depending on the enemies you face. It's really that simple. You know, whether you bring Roar and Smash or bring two line attacks, it all depends on the enemies you're facing in PvP. So, with all that said, let's now talk about her bonds, right? And I'm talking about the hero boost here. So, okay. So, her starting soldier boost is the following that you see. 10% to hit points for soldiers, 10% to their attack, and 10% to their magic defense of all things. Kind of odd. It's quite, it's quite spread out. Her third bond increases attack and defense. So the final soldier boost ends up being 20% hit points, 35% attack, 25% defense, and 20% magic defense. So it buffs a bit of everything with attack increase of 35%, which is pretty nice. From the training ground, she gets access to these three soldiers. Zealots, Heaven's Guard, and Dark Guard. Alright, so let's talk about her best soldiers then. Her best soldiers are kind of dependent on her opponent and Sakura's own class. General purpose wise, her best soldier would definitely be Zealots. Because Zealots are holy class, so nothing counters Zealots, right? Nothing does extra damage to holy class units. And the thing about Zealots is, when they are actually level 10, as long as Sakura has 3 buffs, the soldiers get a 45% attack, defense, and magic defense increase. So, as long as they have 80% hit points, and Sakura has 3 buffs, plus 45% attack, plus 45% defense, plus 45% magic defense, making them incredibly high damage dealing and tough. So that's her best general purpose unit. Right. Other than that, if she had to use a cavalry unit, she has the choice of Heaven's Guard, Bone Dino, and Heavy Cavalry. Generally speaking here, I think the one you'll most likely have leveled up is Heaven's Guard, and that would and Heaven's Guard tends to have the highest damage output anyways, right? Because at, I believe at level 10, it will increase the stats by 45% on these soldiers if she moves 3 tiles. And she's likely to move 3 tiles to attack the enemy, right? So that's why Heaven's Guard would probably be the best soldier choice out of Bone Dino, Heavy Cavalry, and Heaven's Guard. Other than the Cavalry soldiers, she has access to infantry, right? And the infantry choices is Heavy Infantry or Dark Guard. For Sakura, she wants to do damage as much as possible. So for her, the best infantry soldier would be Heavy Infantry over Dark Guard. Because Dark Guard is about after battle dealing fixed damage to the enemy, right? And you don't really want the battle to go on after uh, Sakura attacks in the first place. So Heavy Infantry, which have increased attack value uh, when attacking and increased defense value when defending, becomes her best soldier. Now, of course, using infantry class soldiers on an infantry hero makes you ridiculously vulnerable to cavalry enemies. But you do have to keep in mind that if you're facing, let's say, a Lancer tank, you'll probably want to have infantry soldiers. Yeah. With that said, I will also mention Zealots can usually do the job too, I believe. 
right, with the 45% stat increase. So maybe you don't even need infantry soldiers at all. Uh, that will depend on you. But yeah, generally speaking, I would say the, her best soldiers are these two right here, just from her training ground, Zealot and Heaven's Guard. And then the third choice would be Happy Infantry if you have them built up. I personally don't. I will never be using uh, infantry soldiers on my Sacker as a result. Because, you know, that would be a but leveling up these heavy infantry is going to use a lot of SSR items. I'd rather just level up the Zealots, right, to level 10, and then just use them for her. Especially since Zealots are actually, there's actually quite a few units who use Zealots, as a quick note, unlike heavy infantry. Uh, zealots it can be used by Chloe as her final soldier, they can be used by Chris as her, her final soldier, and even at, by Sakura. So three different characters who can use Zealots as their final soldier. So continuing on, let's talk about Sakura's gear now. Okay, And I already mentioned this previously, but I'm going to reiterate it. Sakura is very gear dependent to be used. You're going to really want to get copies of her best gear before you seriously consider building her up. Okay. At least for PvP purposes. So, with this, I'm actually going to bring up the Google spreadsheet by Black Cat, which has a, which is like a list of all the weapons in the game. Just give me a moment to bring that up. So, here we go. And we're going to start with the weapons list. Now, weapons wise, Sakura has a few choices. Arguably, the best one for her, for weapons, it is these two right here. Okay? The Kernviter or Balance Blade or the Spirit Sword Arataka. Both are basically exclusive weapons. Uh, and the reason these ones are the best is because Kernviter increases uh, the line increases the range of line attack skills by one so that increases her AOE attack skills from four range and five range to five range and six range which really really helps for hitting targets so that's what makes the balance blade or converter incredibly useful other than that she can use the spear sword air attacker because it increases skill by eight percent and also it increases skill by 43 here, as you can see here. These just being able to increase skill by 8% makes her will allow her to have the highest possible skill. So even if your Sakura attacks an enemy Sakura or gets attacked, as the case may be, you're always going to attack first. As long as you have the Spirit Sword Air Attacker. So that one that's what makes this weapon a very, very great weapon for her. Now Keep in mind, however, that this weapon, because it can, it has a chance to remove buffs from enemies and inflict debuffs, it can also be considered Leonhardt's, one of Leonhardt's best weapons as well. So, whether you can get two copies of the Spirit Sword Arataka, it's hard to say. Right. Um, Keep in mind, for example, I've been playing this game for eight months now. I started near uh, in the first week of release, so that was back in January, and I still don't have a few weapons. For example, I still don't have an extreme magic bow, and I still don't have Ragnarok. So, whether you can get a spirit sword air attack is very luck based. Let alone whether you can get two of them. All right. So those are her two best weapons. Generally speaking, if you don't have them, you generally don't want to build her. Pretty much summed up. Now, with that said, if you did want to build her without these two weapons, you know, if, she, if she's in her infantry class, you can consider giving her uh, a Bathory, the, the Seductress. Because even though this gives a bit less attack, it does give more skill, right? And after landing a crit in battle, it deals fixed damage once to the enemy, where the fixed damage is one times the hero's attack. Right, so this can be useful for applying some additional fixed damage, right? And it gives additional skill. So this is a, uh, it's nowhere near the top tier choices, but it is usable. Bathory, the, seduct the seductress, 
for an infantry Sakura. And then finally, other than that, of course, you're gonna go back to those standard weapons, right? Like, for example, Bloodsword Fronting. You know, 43 skill as opposed to 54, but it has the 50% chance to deal fixed damage to the enemy after attacking. Right? Um, yeah. As for the rest, like, you know, Frost Rend and so on, you don't really need them. I mean, <laughs> I don't really consider those to be an option, right? As, and Seal Guardian and Dragon Slayer Graham both increase hit points, which is not what you want for Sakura. Okay, so with the weapon covered, let's move on to her armors. And Infantry and Cavalry share the same armor. Armor-wise, I mean, it's pretty much the same as before, same as usual, right? The best choices is may probably be Aeolus's battle armor because of the chance to reduce ranged attack damage on her. Uh, she can definitely use a Bloodline Magic Armor, right? For a chance to reduce damage taken as well. This one is far less, less necessary for Sakura because she attacks first. So generally speaking, you can say Aeolus' battle armor is one of her, her best in slots. You can choose to give her Arcane Battle Garb for the chance to do fixed damage to the enemy after battle, right? And you can also choose to give her an Aeneas' armor for extra defense and increase her healing. So generally, those are her three options, I would say. Aeolus' battle armor, Arcane Battle Garb, and then only after that would you even look at an Aeneas' armor. Next, helmets. So helmet-wise, again, cavalry and infantry share helmets. And overall, I would say the best helmet, general purpose helmet, is the Chief's Helmet because it increases hit points and after taking action, grants one adjacent friendly unit, not including this unit, 10% extra defense and negates defense and magic defense reduction effects and effects that prevent them from being healed for one turn. It's the last effect, you know, immunity to be, uh, cannot be healed debuffs that makes the Chief's Helmet so good. Because Sakura with 4 movement will probably be, always be placed beside your tank, she can always apply the Chief's Helmet uh, bu buff onto your tank until your Sakura needs to move up to attack the enemies. If you're not going to, if you don't have a Chief's Helmet to give Sakura, well, Reaper's Breath is a good alternate option because Reaper's Breath also gives 10% hit points, and when eliminating an enemy this turn after taking action, you deal fixed damage once to enemies within two blocks at the end of your next turn and the damage is 10% of their max hit points. This is good because Sakura is the character who should be finishing off your enemies, right? That way she can get the stat buff of, you know, plus 10% stats. So, since she's going to be eliminating enemies, the Reaper's Breath can apply an extra free debuff on the enemies that needs to be removed. And finally, Accessory. And the accessory is very much uh, obvious. It's quite obvious. I mean, the accessory you want is the Apex Boots, right? Because it increases attack and gives plus one mobility. So, infantry class, 100%, it's going to be Apex Boots. You want one of these, right? That way she can have four movement. If you don't have Apex Boots and you're using a, then you're probably going to be end up using a Cavalry Sakura. And in that case, you pretty much want any accessory that increases attack, right? Now, I would say the best one would be if you had a spare Overlord's Badge to give her, because the Overlord's Badge would increase hit points and attack. Most, more importantly, it gives all stats plus five percent, and the all stats plus five percent includes the skill, meaning with Overlord's Badge she is getting 5% more skill. So, oh, so yeah, Apex Boots, absolute top tier. If you don't have Apex Boots, give her an Overlord's Badge if you have one. If you don't have Overlord's Badge, then you'll finally look at the other ones. But that increased attack, you know. Wing Shin Guards, you know, Floor's Necklace for another chance of fixed damage, for example. Slayer's Emblem for extra damage to flyers, you know. A whole bunch of options. 
The only one I would not choose is Lone Star Amulet because she's pretty much always going to be close to friendly units. All right, so that pretty much concludes everything I wanted to say about her equipment then. And so the very final thing I'm going to have to talk about is enchant values for Sakura. So I'm just going to jump back into the game first to talk about this. All right, so I'm just going to briefly throw on an item onto her so that I can talk about her enchants. Hold on. What the heck? This is odd. Oh, never mind. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly randomly put a weapon there. Enchants. Because she has a mix of line attack skills and single target strike skills, there are basically two obvious choices of enchants for Sakura. The first one, the most obvious one, is Breeze, right? Because Sakura is slow, Breeze, giving the chance of mobility plus two, can really help allow your Sakura to get in close to the enemies. In addition, it does increase attack and it does increase damage dealt by 10%. So multiple useful options from the Breeze enchant. But I personally think Breeze is the less useful option. Okay, And the reason for this is because I personally feel that Sakura is not a character that needs to rush in solo against the enemies. Right, As an infantry class, she's very vulnerable to cavalry enemies in general. And if she rushes in solo with Breeze and Chant, right, the enemy will probably counterattack with mages, which Sakura can't counterattack against. And the mages will probably rip her up or even kill her. So that's why I'm not a fan of the Breeze enchant myself, personally speaking. So rather than Breeze, the other option, and the one that I think is the superior option, is to give Sakura the Clocks enchant. Right? So Clocks. Clocks, just like, uh, just like Breeze, it does increase attack and int by 5%. But more importantly, Clocks is when dealing skill damage, you get a 30% chance to decrease cooldown by 5. So that means any of her skills that are used, whether it's Smash, whether it's Roar, right? Whether it's Hyaka Roarin, whether it is Okahoshin, all of these have a chance of refreshing their skill cooldown. So of course, it's luck based. But if you're able to toss out, let's say, two of these Hyaka Rorins, right, applying all these debuffs on the enemies, you've probably won right there, the match. You know, especially if you have a balanced blade to increase the range of this skill by one. So that's why Clocks, at least that, at least I feel Clocks may arguably be her best enchant. You know? Don't get me wrong, Breeze is perfectly usable. You, know, you can close in and then smash the enemy healer, for example, or smash the enemy tank, right? Disabling their guard and then follow up with other attackers. Uh, so it's, that's not to say Breeze can't be used, but it's just my initial thought on it, right? That I think Breeze is rather risky. And, you know, it's more of like a sacrifice tool if you use it with Sakura. All right. So that concludes this video pretty much. Oh, I should talk about the best enchant value, shouldn't I? So for Sakura, it's pretty much the same as what you want for everyone else who is attack based, right? For the weapon, you ideally want 15% attack with an attack increase stat. So the absolute ideal enchant would be something like 15% attack and plus 30 attack value, right? If you can get plus hit points up for the third enchant, yeah, sure. But realistically, you're probably just gonna aim for those two. So that would be the best uh, value on the weapon. For the armor, you're going to want 5% attack and 15% hit points. Once again, that's the ideal. Do you expect to get it? Probably not. So you'll probably balance it out. You know? But maybe like something like 5% attack and maybe 10% hit points would be something that would be great for the armor. And then plus whatever for the third stat. Vampire Mask is the same as... Oh, sorry, your helmet would be the same as your armor in terms of the enchant values that you want. You know, plus hit points, plus attack percent, and then a third stat. 
And then finally, for the accessory, you'll want plus 10% attack, or nearly comparable, right? And then ideally plus 10% hit points, and then a third stat, maybe plus attack or something. So, and then, then that would be the best enchant values for you to get. So the absolute ideal would be, I think, plus 10% attack here, and then like I think you can get a maximum of plus 20 or so attack value, 15 or 20 attack value, and then for the and then plus 10% hit points. That would be the absolute ideal. But as you can see, I don't have anything comparable to that myself. And yeah, and that would be the Sakura build. You know, with high hit points, she would be very hard to kill. With high attack, she would have a very high chance of one-shotting enemies. You know, and then, then stacking the buffs uh, from her talent, and then with the high attack, you know, attacking first, she would be just very hard to deal with in general to kill. All right, so one last thing I should mention. Uh, that I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, and that's about her classes, her cavalry class and her infantry class. Okay, keep this in mind. If you you if you're using a cavalry class Sakura, right, and you're actually attacking an infantry class Sakura, you generally can't actually one shot the infantry class Sakura, and the reason for that is because of the skill difference. Evil Slayer has 247 skill. Calvary class Sakura has 142, meaning the Evil Slayer Sakura gets to attack you first. If let's say she has Zealots on her, the Zealots will probably crush your Sakura's soldiers before they even get to attack. So then Sakura herself will do 20 strikes on the Evil Slayer Sakura, but all 20 strikes will probably be wasted on the enemy Zealots. So that no damage will really go through to Sakura herself. So, that's just something to keep in mind, right? Your, your Sakura, your Cavalry class Sakura, will never be able to one-shot an Infantry class Sakura if it ends up being a PvP situation where that happens. But, you know, this is one of those situations where you're using uh, Cavalry Sakura simply because you're lacking equipment, like you don't have Apex Boots. So, yeah, that's, that concludes this video. I hope you found this information useful. And on that note, Metro out.